Welcome to the Auto Less YouTube channel. And if you're new here, I'm currently working on my 1200 horsepower capable BMW X6M, also known as Sasha. She has a completely forged engine, forged transmission, yada, 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 upgraded turbos, custom intercoolers, and we just finished the last couple videos, we just finished making and test fitting the world's first under hood, meaning under the hood, ice tank for the inner chiller. This is also gonna be one of the world's only BMWs with an inner chiller on it, period. So, and I actually have a, uh, had a tank behind me, so let's get this thing moving. So here's the tank here and on the last video which I'm gonna have the link down in the description you said you saw me put this uh, 2000 degree heat radiant it's I think it's called heat heat blocker or something like that is not the reflector gold I think it's like a, a DEI heat shield and it, it's way better than the reflector go and I also use some high high performance HVAC tape just in case the adhesive on this fiberglass back mat starts to lift when this thing freezes up because this tank will freeze up and it will have ice on it you know and you will see that it, this tank is going to have ice on it and the reason why I want to get installed get it installed before I drop it off and I don't want to drop it off while it's not installed is because I can move this tank further out of the way and still close the hood so it can, you know, do what it needs to do while that tank is installed. I can just move this little tank somewhere else. And also, I want to make sure that the engine has move room, you know, because a bunch of people say, oh, the engine doesn't move that good, I meant that much, if the if it has working engine mounts. And my engine mounts are fine, and this engine still moves a lot. Like when I rev the gas, I can actually see both of these. Well, when I have it in drive and I rev the gas, I can see both of these custom intercoolers. These came off a of BMW M6 because they're they're about twice as large or 1.5 times as large as the original ones. So I had to modify this bar here also. But you can see these intercoolers lifting, you know, they're definitely lifting a lot. I know the right side of the engine lifts in the left side of the engine facing the vehicle the left side of the engine dips down so that's even better because i modified this piece here had it crushed and cut out to to meet you know it's still it's still plenty strong though and it still has the original crumple zone in it but i modified that to deal with lift you know, so it's gonna go this way instead of that way. So that's even better. The only thing that I might have to modify is I might have to open up this window a little more if the tank pushes up against it when the engine goes down, if it pushes up against it anymore. But let's get this thing installed and then we'll take it out for a test drive to see. All right, gang, so we ran into a slight problem and I'm gonna tell you what the problem is. So, you see how small this hole is here for the corner of the tank? It needs to be this furthest line out, cut out. And the reason for that is because the engine moves in the opposite way I thought it did. You know, so it needs to be more room for movement on this side. But this fine, you know, it's just a piece of plastic that sits up top and it covers like the windshield wiper motor and all of that stuff like that you know there's nothing back there 
besides, you know, stuff like that. It's just a little cover, you know, that sits in front of the firewall. So we're gonna cut that out. And I got, I went and bought some Dremel, a Dremel Easy Kit with the Easy Lock. This thing here, even though I don't have a Dremel, you know, I have this Harbor Freight Wing, or however you pronounce it, little Dremel tool. But as you can see, the, the, the quick lock set goes right on there and I got the bit made for plastic in there and it comes with uh, plastic metal and thin cut bits so I'm going to use this uh, plastic cutting wheel and go ahead and knock that out to get that out the way Okay, I need to buy some safety glasses, so don't worry about me wearing somebody else's glasses, but they doing the job. But you see, we got that cut out perfectly. So the only thing I need to do now is I need to sand down the edges a little so they won't be sharp. You know, just, just you know, deburr them. I wish I had a deburring tool, but I don't. So I'm gonna use the sanding bit that I have for this, uh, Dremel to sand these corners down some. Two thousand years later. Who is literally about five hours later. And let me show you why. So the tank is in. As you can see, that tab has a bolt in it there. Let me move this cable here. And the tab around back also has a bolt in it and that one has a ground also that goes to that little hole and pretty much those two those two bolt holes that i'm securing the tank with are these two same holes here one there and one back here under the wire harness right there those two bolt holes those are actually the same two bolt holes and the reason why you can see those two bolt holes is because I removed this. Now it's in the recycle bin. And the reason I removed that is because it's a lot easier to get the tank in and out. You know, and it's a lot cleaner as well than having that plastic bridge across the top. You know, the only thing that looks different is this. The actual uh, turbo heat shields, you can see them, you can see it better now because that bridge used to cover up to about here, from here to there. You know, so really only the back was exposed and this front little hump here was exposed. And the only reason why I threw it away instead of uh, keeping it is because it was broken. You know, it was completely broken. That's why the wiring harness never set down inside that plastic track because the top piece was snapped off you know so the wiring harness would just go wherever it wanted to anyways so what I did is as you can see I have the wiring harness pulled all the way back I still have zip ties that I haven't cut yet but it's far away from the engine way further than it was so I'm not worrying about any heat heat damage or anything but because it's way back there on the firewall, actually right on that heat shield that the firewall that sits in front of the firewall. So I'm not worried about that. And it cleans it up a hell of a lot. You know, I actually can see everything and I'm going to definitely get this powder coated candy apple red because now it looks kind of off. So that heat shield is going to be powder coated and that's going to help. Like I told you, uh, powder coat is a good heat insulator. You know, it, it keeps the heat where it, it keeps it out or keeps it in. So I'm gonna be powder coating both sides of that uh, of that heat shield right there, and and after that it'll, it'll look a hell of a lot better. But anyway, let me show you what took so long besides the the wiring harness. So as you can see, 
I had to open that up a lot more and I had to modify the top of the uh, the little seal here in that corner because it was sitting on top of it. You know, so now the entire engine compartment still seals perfectly and that has a way to go and it, you know, I did overcut on this a little bit, you know, but I have an extra one of these off of a, off of a different uh, X5. So I'm going to pop it on there and recut it. So it's about half of that length. It stops about right there. Yeah, but that's why I'm not going to test drive it with the tank as well you know because one it's night so i'm gonna wait till tomorrow test drive it to make sure the tank clears as you can see there you go you can see it now the space between the the tank and the uh the strut tower it's about i would say about a half inch you know we we put that that should be fine because when the engine moves, the tank isn't just gonna move to the side, it's gonna go down into the side. So that should be fine. But yeah, so tomorrow I'm gonna do those things. I'm gonna take it for a test drive to make sure that all of this stuff clears good when, on heavy, when I'm on heavy throttle. And I'm also gonna take this heat shell off and take it to get powder coated. You know, since I'm not gonna be using the engine cover. That's just what I decided to do, not use the engine cover at all. You know, because I don't know, it looks a lot more menacing this way. It looks a lot more beastly. You know, I'm not going for a subtle look. As you can see, this isn't a subtle looking car at all. So I want the engine bay to look just as crazy as the outside. So if this works out well tomorrow, which I'm going to have in this video, then I just keep it exactly like that. So it's going to be a, a, a few hours for me, but only a couple of seconds for you. So the next day So I'm so pissed off because I lost most of this footage where I was taking the car for a test drive, you know, doing some exhaust clips and, you know, some heavy throttle pulls to see if the tank would move, you know. And for some odd, stupid reason, this is the only little clip I have out of almost 30 minutes of riding around, you know, heavy exhaust throttle. And the reason the check engine light was on is I explained in that deleted footage or lost footage that I had a ground, that engine ground off that the tank sits on the back tab and I opened the door so the car woke up while, while the ground was off so it threw all type of code. So definitely disconnect the battery before you remove any grounds. We just did about 30 minutes of driving so let's hope the engine bay ain't oh man look soon as i get out we got a seven series the big boy with it all in the grill we over here at boosted beamers this is my buddy's omar shop boosted beamers and boy look at here i wonder what this seven series got all done to it can't wait to check them on out check this seven series on out but yeah i'm finna pop the hood game so we can make sure everything went went good with the drive. Oh, I forgot to pop the hood. So let me re-pop the hood. All right, there we go. Now make sure everything went good. And I think that's Omar pulling up right here. Yeah, so everything looked good. You know, I was heavy throttle a bunch. And the tank still in place, so look like everything gonna work out perfectly fine. You know? Yeah. yeah, so everything going great. So I'm excited, gang. 
check on the uh, inner coolers. Inner coolers looking good. No rubbing on the inner coolers because them inner coolers is extremely tight. So I was worried about them for a while, but yeah, there's no rubbing whatsoever on anything. So let me take a look down in here better. You see the fuel pump and the the fuel pump and the fuel lines. No rubbing on that. And the PCV crankcase. It still has a gap there, so I say we in good shape. I would say we in good shape. Yeah, so let's get let's go ahead and talk to Omar to get this uh these check engine lights all gang and then we can go ahead and get her dropped off to Orlando so we can get her tuned. A few moments later. We finally back home. It was a mission success. Gang, I'm so happy right now. As you can see, I was I mean, I was heavy throttle for most of the test and everything still clears perfectly. Nothing's rubbing, nothing's touching. The tank is fine on both sides. You know, everything looks great. So now all I have to do is take that heat shield off, take it to get it powder coated, which I'm gonna take that off probably today sometime because it's hot right now. Yeah, it's hot to the touch right now. So I'm gonna take that off and get that uh, powder coated. And that's gonna help keep down under hood temperatures too, cause that's gonna be powder coated. But the thing I love the most is this tank. I mean, after all that, this tank is not even warm at all compared to everything else in this hood, under the hood. This tank is very, very cool to the touch. It's crazy, you know, and that's thanks to this uh, it has two layers of base color and two layers of candy as well as uh, the part that sits directly on the engine and around the tank in the back of the tank is wrapped in 2000 degree radiant heat wrap from DEI. So yeah gang, I'm, I'm extremely happy right now. So next video I'm going to be dropping her off to Aguadilla to get the inner, inner chiller and the, uh, and the turbo smart waste gates hooked up as well as getting my uh, meth injection hooked up as well. So like, share, and subscribe. Sasha almost ready. Yuri next. Auto lust out.